Hi, Kazu here. Uh, recently, I was playing with Face Mesh. I was trying to figure out how we can apply on creative coding, and eventually, I came up with this doodle system. It draws shapes, change the color, undo, and delete. Furthermore, take a screenshot or save the data into JSON format for reusable. In this tutorial, I want to encourage the beginners who just learned p5.js basics and ambitious to expand their abilities. So my code is gonna be a bit complicated, but I'll try my best for explanation, so stick with me. Alright, so first we need to prepare the project files. I have HTML, JavaScript, and CSS here. In the HTML file, I have a CDN link of p5. In case you don't know what is CDN, it's a content delivery network. It allows transfer and loading library functions through the internet. So with this, we don't need to put the p5 library files like this. To get the CDN, we go to the p5 homepage, go to download, and we see the CDN here. Select the version. At this moment, this is the latest. So I copy the tag and paste here like this. Next, we're gonna use one more framework called MediaPipe for face mesh. MediaPipe is a cross-platform machine learning framework allows us to use many detections like face, hand, daily object, holistic body, and so on. The syntax is very easy and it's also provided for multiple environments, which is great. And today we're gonna use this one right here. There are some descriptions. Uh, this is for Python. Yep, then the JavaScript. Uh, we see the CDN links here. So I copy all of them and paste above P5. Those are HTMLs too. Then the JavaScript to the JS file. I changed the video size to 640 and 480, that's very enough. Alright, let's run it once. Alright, now we succeed to run the model. In this HTML, we created a video and a canvas element. Inside the JavaScript, we store those into variables. Then we create a face mesh model and start the video streaming at here. And this is a config function. We set some properties of the functions. And first, maximum number of face to detect. For the simplicity, I leave it one. Mean detection confidence. Machine learning model returns the confidence score of each estimation. And the score value is zero to one. And when we set the threshold like 0.5, then we'll only take result above 0.5. The rest will be abandoned. Mean tracking confidence. I assume this model uses object tracking along with face detections. It doesn't run face detection at every single frame. Instead, like once detect a face uh, from next frame, just tracking it. And when the model runs the tracking, execute the face detection again. You get that? Then, and after set those parameters, this is the function to execute the detection itself. When the model got the result, give it to a callback function, which is this function. Inside that, clear previous background, we draw video stream on canvas, then draw all the lines of the face mesh, okay? All right, next we're gonna combine this model with p5.js. First, I clean up this plain JavaScript drawing stuff. I also delete this. And let's make a global variable to store result data out here. Mm. By the way, I want to rename the uh, callback functions to like got faces. 
because it's a bit confusing if the name is exactly the same with the uh, estimate function. All right, let's see what's inside the data. Hmm. All right, the data type is a JS object, and inside that, yeah, this one, uh, we see an array length of one, because now detecting only single face. Then inside that, uh, we again have an array length um, for 468. And that's, the that's the number of the vertex I detected on my face. Okay. And inside that, yeah, we finally see 3D coordinates here, those in small JS objects. And by the way, in this tutorial, I only use the uh, X and Y. Uh, let's do it uh, two dimensional for now. And so yeah, we need to remember the whole structure, the data structure, in order to access from the p5.js later. So uh, maybe you want to take a screenshot or copy it somewhere so that you don't forget. All right, we finally implemented the p5 part. Alright, um, as you guys realized, it looks different from usual. I introduced you something called the p5.js instance mode, in case you don't know. At default, p5.js is global mode, which means you can call all the p5 functions at the entire JS file. However, this often causes problems when we combine the p5 with another framework or library for plain JavaScript, just like this MediaPy face mesh. Due to p5.js works a little bit differently from JS native. And instance mode is a solution for that. In instance mode, p5.js doesn't exist globally, so we can use p5 functions or properties only in this little container. So it doesn't conflict with uh, functions of other, another libraries. Yet still be able to exchange data with another libraries through those um, global variables, which is great. And don't forget to put this p uh, before every p5 functions and reserved words. Okay. In instance mode, the functions or properties can be executed via this object. Uh, by the way, uh, the character p is an argument, so it's arbitrary. You can name it as you like. Okay, so let's display the face mesh inside this p5.js. First, I separate uh, the face mesh and the p5 part into a different files. I move this face mesh part into the new file. I just found this M is actually a lower case. Alright, that's great. It's working beautifully, isn't it? Hmm. So let me explain those codes. Um, this clear, this is a P5 functions to draw a um, transparent background at every frame. Then if the detection and the, um, the landmarks aren't undefined, then at least we got one face, then this function. Draw a point on every uh, all the coordinates, okay? Uh, if you found something is wrong, then make sure those spellings and put this P on every, uh, before not only before every function, but also those P5 words, okay? So, 
Because the video and the P5 canvas are different HTML elements, those are positioned separately, so we need to work on some CSS. First, I attach ID to the P5 canvas. Okay. And I set like canvas. And then this one. Uh, this is a class, but I, I want to change this to ID. Because, you know, the class is to treat multiple similar elements originally, but we have only one video stream. Only one video object, right? Okay. So we, change, we changed here to ID, so we also need to change this. Like ID. Okay. Then in the CSS, I just added some properties. Uh, this position property determines how the element is positioned in the HTML, HTML page. Okay. The attribute absolute means absolute. <laughs> At this mode, they don't care a relation between other elements, but only between this whole HTML page. They only affected by those top, bottom, left, right, those kind of stuff. Okay. And this Z index. Um, this is for the z-axis value, I mean depth of each element. In this case, the number is bigger, the element, the arrange comes to forward. So, reload it. Perfect. I change it to white. Hmm? Alright, I end this video for now. I appreciate your patience and effort. In the next video, we draw a shapes on our face. Perhaps I upload it in the next several days, so stay tuned, guys.